As you previously studied, geometric constraints are important for creating parametric blocks. However, they're not the only constraints applied to this process. There are also dimensional constraint tools which are also taught in this class. Dimensional constraints are important elements for parameterization, maybe even the most important. Dimensional constraint tools are on the block editor and parametric tabs and the block authoring palette. Now let's study each one of these tools to understand its functionality. The linear, horizontal, vertical and aligned tools are for measuring linear elements. After defining the entity points to be measured, we need to put the dimensions value or expressions for these. And after that, input the number of grips the block will display. These grips are used for defining entity length. Let's enable the vertical tool as an example. After that, select the entity points, define the dimension and the number of grips. You can see how simple and easy it is to apply dimensional constraints. The radial tool is for measuring the radii in circumferences and arcs, which are present in part geometry. However, the diameter tool is used for measuring arc and circumference diameters. It's the same for linear measurement tools when specifying the measurement entity. Then the dimension value and the number of display grips are requested. See how easy it is. You enable the radial tool, specify the entity, define the dimension value and the number of grips and it's ready. Finally, the angular tool is for inserting angular measurements between two entities. See, you do it in the same way as in other tools. When you enable them, there is a value requested for the angle and the number of grips to be displayed. Define it as you see here and then the angular dimensional constraint will be correctly inserted. You can see there are two different ways to use dimensional constraints to modify the block measurements. Manually using grips or by inputting the final measurements. When expressions were inserted in dimensions, then the grips are not displayed as these constraints require other dimensions. There is another available tool for managing all inserted dimensional constraints in the block editor. This tool is accessed on the Manage panel. When the command is enabled, a new palette is displayed, the Parameters Manager. Modify the constraint name and values and insert expressions here. You can also insert some user-defined customized parameters. Make changes and customize constraints as you wish. So in this class you've studied about different types of dimensional constraints available in AutoCAD blocks. You've also learned about how these constraints are inserted and managed.